Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the Village Idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to Bassett Law. Now, this morning, I'm beginning here, where you will have seen me before. You'll have seen this in the Holbeck episode. Now, where I'm going today is through those gates. It is a public footpath, as you can see from this sign right here. So I am allowed to walk down it, but here's the catch. I have absolutely no idea how much I'm gonna be able to film in this one because most of it is off limits to the public. This is Welbeck. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welbeck is a mostly private estate in the Bassett Law District of Nottinghamshire, slightly to the southwest of Worksop. The population is included within the civil parish of Holbeck. This one was quite the experience for all the wrong reasons. My original plan to film this video did not include this footpath at all, as the route I'd planned ended up being impossible to follow. You'll see why that was the case in a short while. Okay, so I've answered one question. The road I've just walked up was indeed a public footpath and it turns here to go that way. So I'm going to explore down there in a second. This way, no public right of way, no through road or footpath authorised access only. So I cannot go down there. So let's see what we can find that away. The footpath we're on here is the Robin Hood Way and it skirts around the edge of Welbeck Park, the very same park where the Greendale Oak, the tree that gives Cookney's pub its name, was located. It's part of the 15,000 acre Welbeck estate, which includes neighbouring Holbeck. In the centre of the park is an enormous lake, named Welbeck Great Lake. However, none of the biggest and best features of the estate are publicly accessible, and that gave me a problem. So I was getting, I was getting a little bit worried because um, <laughs> to obviously complete this whole entire project the channel is all about to visit every civil parish in England I need to have set foot in every civil parish and thankfully I've just checked the map and yes this area here is within Welbeck Parish because nowhere else I'd been up to now not even at the end of the Holbeck video was in Welbeck that was all in Holbeck most of Welbeck estate is in Holbeck um, but here at this little junction here and it is a public footpath so I'm okay uh, this is within Welbeck, so this does count, thankfully. <laughs> um, but as far as walking around goes, this road appears to run back towards Norton in Norton and Cockney. Um, this one leads back towards the A60, and it's this one I'm going to take because I'm going to head back to the car, which is parked in Holbeck, um, and I'm going to try my best to see if I can find somewhere else in Welbeck that I can actually access. Everything else is off limits, I'm afraid, people. Um, the Harley Gallery and the um, uh, the garden centre that you saw at the end of the Holbeck episode, they're in Holbeck, they're not in Welbeck. Uh, but I will uh, have a, a quick look to see if I can film some of their, them as well. Um, but generally speaking, most of this is off limits, um, which is a bit disappointing because there's plenty of great buildings, uh, great architecture in Welbeck. Um, you can find no end of pictures uh, online. And even if you go on Google Maps, you can even see some of it because I don't know how they got away with this. The Google Maps camera car actually goes down what is, what is actually a private road, which I've just seen. Uh, and you can see on the street view, I might, do a bit of screen recording here on my laptop just to show you um, what I mean by that. But as far as walking around or accessing anything, I'm afraid I can't. There's nothing I can do. 
This footpath eventually leads back to the A60, passing one of the many lodges which stand throughout the estate in various places. This was pretty much the sum total of the walking I could legally do. So here's why it all went wrong. The red outline here on Google Maps shows the boundaries of Welbeck Civil Parish. The Great Lake can be seen in the center at the bottom, and out to the east you can see just how far Welbeck Park stretches. It's a long way. The B6034, which crosses the boundaries, is, as far as I can tell, the only public road in the parish, and if there are any public footpaths across the park, none of them will lead to Wellback Abbey, or to any of the buildings I was hoping to see. There are very few properties in the parkland either. Most of the estate is clustered around Wellback Abbey, which is to the west of the boundaries. Here we have just the estate, part of which falls within Holbeck. The boundary between the two runs at a sort of 45 degree angle through it, slicing it in half. Welbeck Abbey is the building to the very far right of your screen. Google Maps Street View will have you believe that the road from the Harley Gallery on the left to the Abbey is a public road. Indeed, when I was researching this, I saw no signs on that road saying private road or anything else of the like. That was until I actually got here. It appears since the camera car was last at Welbeck, things have changed. Here is what Google Maps will show you. You'll recognize this entrance to the Garden Center and the Harley Gallery from last week's Holbeck episode. The road to the left of the gates is the one I was planning to drive down for a short distance before parking up and walking along the road all the way to the Abbey and back again, following the route we're about to take. The road is no longer public. You won't see any signs on this road as we travel along it virtually, but there is now a sign that states it's a private road with no unauthorized access, much like the one I came across earlier in the video. So you'll have to imagine that what you see here is in fact my camera and not Google Maps, as this is what I was planning to film. Let's see what's down here. Welbeck Abbey is at the very far end of this road. We'll be traveling past some of its associated stable blocks and other assorted buildings on the way. It was originally founded in the 12th century as a monastery. The estate was mentioned in the Doomsday Book, where it's recorded as belonging to Hugh Fitzbaldrick. Thomas de Cookney founded the religious house in 1140. It was an abbey of pre-Monstratensian canons dedicated to St. James the Great. The abbey was enriched by gifts from the Goosehills, Danecourts, Bassets and other families from Nottinghamshire, and it received a considerable grant from King Edward I. After the dissolution of the monasteries, it would eventually become the country house residence of the Dukes of Portland. It is one of four contiguous ducal estates in northern Nottinghamshire, and the house is a Grade 1 listed building. Some of these names associated with Welbeck through time will be familiar from many a previous episode. At the dissolution of the monasteries, the site was first granted by King Henry VIII to Richard Wally of Screverton. After being owned by a City of London clothier, the abbey was purchased by Gilbert, 7th Earl of Shrewsbury, in 1599. Next, it was sold to Sir Charles Cavendish, the son of Bess of Hardwick in 1607, and it passed to his son William Cavendish, the first Duke of Newcastle. Members of the Cavendish family converted it into a country house and added a riding house in the 17th century to the design of Robert Smithson and his son John. Only basements and inner walls were retained from the original fabric of the old abbey buildings. In the 18th century, it passed through an heiress into the Bentinck family and became the seat of the Earls and Dukes of Portland. It's had some interesting people come and go over the years. For one, the cricketer Ted Allotson, who held a batting world record for 50 years, is from Welbeck. Much more notable, though, is Archduke Franz Ferdinand, who accepted an invitation from the Duke of Portland to stay at Welbeck Abbey in 1913. This was almost a year before his assassination, which triggered the First World War. Over the course of the war between 1914 and 1919, the kitchen block was used as an army hospital. After World War II, Welbeck was let by the Dukes to the Ministry of Defence and was operated as Welbeck College, an army training college until 2005, when the college would move to a purpose-built facility at Woodhouse Eaves near Loughborough. The 5th Duke of Portland undertook the most substantial building works at Welbeck. The kitchen gardens covered 22 acres and were surrounded by high walls. One of the walls, a peach wall, measured over 1,000 feet in length. He was famous for being the Burrowing Duke, commissioning an impressive range of buildings that included a maze of underground tunnels. His picturesque lodges and stables are scattered across the local landscape. They were designed to reference his ancestor's style at Bolsover Castle. One of his buildings was the gasworks built in about 1860 to light his underground structures. And that building now is the Harley Gallery. One of his tunnels, more than 1,000 yards in length, led from the main house to a riding school which, when built at the time, was the second largest riding house in the world, exceeded only by a huge manage adjacent to the Kremlin in Moscow. 
A longer, more elaborate tunnel, one and a half miles long, intended as a carriage drive, broad enough for two carriages to pass, led towards Worksop. This was abandoned in the late 19th century, when a section forming part of the dam on Welbeck's Great Lake failed. South Tunnel Lodge still exists, and I discovered whilst editing this you can actually walk to it, passing over the Great Lake in the process. You'd better believe I was kicking myself about that one. As far as filming goes, I was not to be defeated that easily. After my very disappointing walk, I opted to hop back into the car and drive into the garden centre and the Harley Gallery which you saw at the end of the Holbeck episode last week. This area is known as the Courtyard. It houses the Harley Gallery, which of course is the old gasworks, the Portland Collection and the Welbeck Farm Shop, as well as the Harley Cafe. It's described by Welbeck's very own website as a treasure trove of curiosities. The garden centre is called Knot Cuts and it's been trading since 1897. I've linked their website below. As for the Harley Gallery, it's open from Tuesday to Saturday and shows contemporary exhibitions by leading visual artists. Exhibitions change regularly, showing anything from photography to textiles to ceramics. In visiting the courtyard at Welbeck, you can find the Made at Welbeck range, which showcases produce made on the estate. The Made at Welbeck range includes meat, game and charcuterie from the Welbeck estate, milk from the Welbeck dairy, the world famous Stitchelton cheese, Welbeck bakehouse bread, Welbeck Abbey brewery ales and a whole host of jewellery and ceramics. Apparently, you can even learn to make your own Made at Welbeck produce by trying a course at the School of Artisan Food. So I've come back into Holbeck. You'll be familiar with this area from last week. This is near the Silver Jubilee bench in Holbeck Woodhouse. And I'm just gonna sit here and uh, talk a little bit about this experience. I know I haven't filmed much for Welbeck. It's not my fault um, if it's all private access, private roads, there's not much I can do. I don't feel too deflated to be honest because I didn't know how much I was going to be able to film anyway. I have at least managed to set foot in the parish and that means it counts. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, it's visited. Obviously I couldn't leave a card anywhere, uh, but that doesn't really matter. As long as I've walked through the boundaries at some point, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's fine. I've done it. Um, so well bet can be ticked off. That's good. Um, but yeah, uh, the rest of the video obviously had to be pictures uh, and the screen recording from uh, Google Maps. Um, hopefully that gave you a good uh, enough idea as, as to what Welbeck is all about. Um, but as far as actually visiting the place, you can't, without prior permission at least. Um, so yeah, that's uh, a bit of a disappointment. I would have liked to have seen some of those buildings in person. Um, but these things happen, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. It, effectively, I've still done the job. I've just done it in a different way to normal. And I have, like I said, still set foot within the boundaries. It is what it is, I'm afraid, guys. But at least I can tick it off. And that's 65 down now in Bassingmore with only one left. And if you watched the parish notice board a few weeks ago, you'll know what that one is. Um, and the, there's going to be uh, hopefully a gathering of some of you Bassett Law folk to celebrate finishing the district, which is going to be good. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to uh, head off now to a different place entirely uh, and make another video. But for now, this has been the parish of Welbeck, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiots, and I'm out. <laughs>